How is toxic masculinity and violence portrayed in films such as Fight Club? Um, I mean, most films are about men, so it's it's not unusual that some should have a kind of negative portrayal of uh, male strength and power. Um, I mean, since the film began, you've always had this idea of kind of macho men, going back to sort of cowboy films um, and beyond. But I, I think that there's something unique about Fight Club that really does glorify violence. And actually, violence in itself is is meant to be a kind of somehow an educational rite of passage, um, almost some sort of tribal, primitive idea that you become a man through through enacting the violent nature that you have within. But I think that you get a glorification of violence that there's no real sort of comeback to it. It just, it only has positive things. It makes the narrator more of a man, you know. And I think that that's why one could argue toxic masculinity is a feature of the film. The very phrase toxic masculinity, I think, is a bit of a kind of, a bit of a shorthand that's overused. Um, does it just mean bad behaviour for anyone or is it particularly bad male behaviour? I think that these are bad guys. These are guys enjoying being kind of, you know, boys... Little boys with big toys, effectively. They're allowed to kind of, you know, attack each other and, and uh, turn playground fights into something somehow empowering and ennobling. But there's a danger that it does somehow glorify that violence. Do you think the movie was romanticised? And why do you think it has such a cult following? I think the two two questions are kind of linked. I think that the cult following is because it is romanticised. So I think that there's this romanticised notion that, you know, real men have a scar uh, as a kind of mark of pride. Uh, I think the reason why it got a cult following is that lots of people, I think a lot of people can 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 see his boring dead end job that anybody could do and feel that it's not they're not sort of fulfilling their their role as men and they're not fulfilling their kind of more animalistic passions effectively. Um, and so you have now got not only a cult following for the film but actually Fight Club, f- actual Fight Clubs came came off the back of it. People doing this and. The spread of what's called white collar boxing where guys in suits actually who ordinarily wouldn't go near a gym are actually deliberately going into the ring and actually enjoying having you know a good punch up um so i think that it, it speaks to something that's missing in society for a lot of men which is a, a chance to kind of express a kind of more raw powerful side of themselves there's a big link between toxic masculinity and misogyny yep and especially as a, we're in a day and age where you can see anything on the media. There's yep. TikTok, Instagram, yep. Snapchat, Twitter. Yep. And going off with um, how Fight Club was romanticised yep. and people want to, and boys want to be Tyler Durden yep. and also looking at Andrew Tate yep. and how boys look up to him. Yep. Um, it really sets in stone in their developing brains mm. that this is how I want to be. I think if they're open to that, yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't think that necessarily affects all young men in the no, same no, way, no, but if, if they've got... If there's something missing from their life, and it'd be interesting to see any kind of study, you know, I, I would be, I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of these people getting involved in this stuff have some sort of common background deficiency. You know, for example, they may they may just have no male figures in their life. You know, that kind of thing. They they don't have positive rail, positive male role models to to look up to. I think another feature as well that's not helping with this whole kind of. Because, you know, if we think about it, it's treating women badly, a lot of it as well. It's not yes. just enjoying the violence, it's also violence upon women. And I think another thing that, that has to be blamed for that as well is the incredible access people have to pornography now as well. And I think that most of that is quite demeaning. Um, yes. So I think that, you know, they're getting it from all sides, really, just these images of, the, you know, power is, is you know, the winner is the strongest person in the room. And that, that, that necessarily, if you, if you are just a bit of a thug... Yep. Are there... Any links to watching violence on screen to how people will act in real life, kind of mimicking behaviours? Yeah, I mean, you've got the, the Bandura theory that, that there is a causal link between what people see and, and how they act. Um, I'm, I'm not convinced that, it's, that there's a direct correlation. I, I, what I think is that if you are impressionable already, same as with the Tate thing, that exposure to these things might kind of it might do something to you but i don't think that just you know that if you take a well-adjusted ordinary young male and, and sit him in front of a fight club that he's going to turn into a psychopath but i think if he's got problems that a film like that might encourage a, a, a bad behavior do you think men are expected to be violent because of toxic masculinity uh no i think that men are expected to be uh assertive um i don't necessarily say violent i think men are expected to be assertive and they're expected to be strong and they're not expected to kind of back down are expected to be tough and 
you know, there's, there's a role for that in some respects. You know, it is the kind of, if you think about a kind of classic family unit, you know, sometimes the man is meant to kind of work hard and kind of, you know, protect. keep his head and protect. And, you know, I think there is a kind of role for all that. But has it become bad? Um, yeah, a little bit, maybe it's played upon that. That requirement to be strong is sometimes exaggerated in, in film. And it may sort of give people a slightly a wrong image of what that strength is i mean films tend to suggest you know certainly heroes in films think about say james bond films he can quite easily i mean let's use the word you know murder you know 20 people in a film and there's no comeback because it's somehow morally set up to be okay yeah um so are we subconsciously telling people to that it's okay to, to kill and maim to an extent yes uh, is it the fault of toxic masculinity no i think it's just the way the film industry is and i think it's the way that young men behave you know that we are just meant to be, but we, well, I'm not young anymore, but young men are meant to be kind of, you know, strong and kind of, you know, determined and successful. So is that toxic masculinity? No, I think toxic masculinity is a thing, but I don't think it's a particularly new thing. I think we've, we've got a new name for a, an old problem that's got worse. Yeah? Yes. That's it. Good. Thank you.